Okay, it is the year 2013. I'm doing a report on, on my specialised studies of the photocopier industry. Okay, it's, it's pitched at just about every OEM because I'm an expert on the subject. I've got Asperger's syndrome, so I'm very plugged into the subject. Right, okay, what's the analysis of the copier industry of 2013? It looks like it's headed for an iceberg. It already has hit the iceberg. And like the Titanic, well then again, can we say it's quite as bad as the Titanic? Because actually the Titanic went down and it was totally, it went to the bottom of the ocean, right? But we could say individually, might, a lot of companies might end up like Titanics sunk. <sighs> okay, right. It was once a great industry. It was an industry that people were actually connected to. But then again, though, they never worked very well. You know, we used to, we used to play around with them as a 15-year-old. We used to assist people on how to use them because they were that hard. Some of the machines I remember were from Canon, like Canon MP, 3225s, Canon MP270s, very simple devices by today's standards, analog devices that didn't have this crazy networking stuff. <laughs> but basically, it was quite bad, it was quite, they were very annoying. I could work out a copier system just like that. Not so good at school, don't have much short term memory. I don't just have Asperger's Syndrome, but I'm not stupid. <laughs> anyway, but one of the things I've noticed is the 90s were a great time, but unfortunately the industry went dark, and then after that we had the year 2000. We would just fast forward to 2013. We don't have much progress here, because although the machines are still are full of clutter, feature clutter, you know, I mean, why the hell do you guys put, I mean, I know the layout functions on a lot of the devices are a pain to set up. The admin functions are a nuisance. The machines have got hard drives that remember information, and most of the customers and, or the clientele are blissfully unaware of the identity theft scourge that's on the, on the horizon here. You know, six, less than 60% of Americans I've seen on YouTube don't know that this threat exists. And apparently overriding a hard drive, I've read, or I've watched is not so easy. Now most people are not savvy with those stupid copier products because they're not made with love and passion. You know, they're not made with a sense, they're treated like a homework subject that, you know, you hate your schoolwork. You know, <laughs> let me tell you one thing. I hated school. I didn't like school. I wasn't good at school. That's why. And not only that, I didn't like it therefore. So I thought, oh, yeah, homework. Bloody hell, I don't want to do my homework. You know, they throw it to the, no, I don't have dogs, but, you know. So basically, you know, if you don't like something, you're not going to do it very well. And school wasn't a thing I enjoyed, so therefore, I treated it with a sense of contempt, a sense of, I've got to just do it, otherwise I'll get in trouble. Otherwise, so therefore, the copy industry is functioning on a similar way. The people running the industry don't like what they do, they just do it for this stuff. This is the reward. I've got to do it. I've got to pay the rent. That's all it is. I've got to pay the rent. It's all, you know, you get in trouble if you don't pay the rent or you don't pay your light bill, your electricity bill, whatever. It's done for purely for the money because you don't, you don't like it, but like homework, you got to do it. Hmm. Anyway, I'll just say that the industry is headed for a, headed for a breakdown. It won't die. But there are people championing it a bit. There are, I want to read the blogs. I analyze the machines in real time. I watch customers or clients actually using them. I'm not talking about buyers, labs, and artificial rig ups that probably, which I don't know, but the industry is very secretive and dishonest. They don't know what the hell they're doing with, but it goes on behind the scenes in those labs. You know, I don't work in the industry. But I'm very suspicious of what goes on behind closed doors. Hush, hush, hush. Hmm, the quiet is so deafening, isn't it? Oh, damn. So the thing is, 
What was I going to say? Well, damn it. Oh, well, but basically what goes on behind closed doors, just don't know, and I've just lost my train of thought. Oh dear, I'm an absent-minded professor. Oh no, that's the secret. I've got very little short-term memory, but I'm going to basically make a comedy act out of it. Hee hee hee, all right. But that doesn't mean I'm not cognitively well endowed. I know a lot more than normal people. I just don't have... I've just got the memory span of a, a goldfish. Ah, ha, ha. I'm a very slow learner, but I'm not stupid. I can rattle a copy of system with those little fingers better than they all can. And that's the thing I learned by analysis, I learned by doing. And I'll tell you one thing, if I watch the customers, that's it, the buyer's lab. The buyer's lab can never simulate what real interactions are with customers. Okay, it's ugly. So you walk into a library, you walk into a chemist, you walk into a, 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 a self-service bureau, but you, what do I see? I see carnage. People don't like it. Why is it too hard to use? You can have a brain like mine to use it. And how many people have brains that are mine? Few. What do I think about copying? It's just this utility. It's just a thing you've got to do. It's, it's worse than homework now because just to do a single black and white copy requires you to be to work the wrong functions. You're going to say, some copy is going to be in there. Okay, so it's a four, the paper tray mismatch. What the hell? What the, what the, what the F? Hang it. And of course, hard drive security springs from the fact that you have to use the admin functions to, to configure the thing properly. And that is, of course, very difficult and very taxing on an average brain. And you know, and all this networking and networking and networking and networking, and networking and makes things feel very angry, very confused. So the, let's just say the industry is headed for a breakdown. Some heads are going to roll. The independent dealers are doing a good job, but, hmm. but it's quite amusing when you're watching from afar and you're watching the kind of people running the industry because that's going to kill you. Your jobs are going to roll too. You're not going to have a job. You're going to end up on the street. You're going to like that, aren't you? No. Then you might not even have photocopiers in 10 years' time if this keep continues. After all, we've had people champing at the bit who really care about the industry on these blogs talking about the disappearance. They don't like the thought of that. Their lives are dependent on the existence. That's what their business is. They run and they love to do it. But it's not just that. They're, they're relying on you guys to keep it going. Now, forget about paperless. I think paperless is a load of trollop. It's been proven. And guess who started the paperless revolution? It's a stupid game. Xerox, of all people. And it just died in the butt. No, we still keep our little PDFs. We keep our... We do keep some net, we keep the networking, of course. We're not gonna, I'm not going to say that we're going to go back to the old days of, of analog light lens and pure, you know, non-connectivity. Yes, we're going to keep those things, but the machines are fully kitted with all sorts of weird functions that only a, only a pinball wizard would use. Now, why would you have color conversion on RICO machines? Why would you have overlay functions on this hub machines or on Canon Image Runner Advanced machines? No one uses that stuff. No one likes it. I feel as if I'm the only one who uses it. I'm an artist. I use photocopies as an art form. It's a substitute for a real job. Dang it, but I'll tell you what, it's a powerful analysis tool, but I'll tell you, I'll give you a long-range forecast. It's not pretty. Now, I care about Xerox, but Xerox will look like they're heading for the rocks. <laughs> Get it, rocks? <laughs> Xerox? <laughs> all right, that's terrible. All right, that's a pun. Photocopy of jokes. Okay. Ah. Nerd jokes, geek jokes, whatever. Yes, right. Well, it's been run in a way that they're getting too over-diversified. They're not concentrating on what they did best. Copiers, printers, faxes, you know, little narrow band, but you, you narrow it down, you get a better result. And they're taking on medical equipment, which could mean lives are at stake. Right, okay. But the thing is, I love that company, the bits. But what can I do? Nothing. But I can still have a bit of fun and watch it and see if my forecasts come true. But well, one thing to say is when I was young and I worked for Xerox for a brief moment, um, basically <laughs> I asked the question in 1990, are there, will there be throwaway copiers? It was just a throwaway, get it, throwaway, throwaway question. What do we have now? Damn. 
we do have them now, don't we? Now, that wasn't even an attempt. That was just because I love the product so much. The thought of buying something that lasts only a short time is an abhorrence. And now we've got electronic waste on our hands. Then we go to drink coffee, crap. Ah, ha, ha. No, that's not funny. But then sometimes people, scientific people, can do have a bit of a cut in their tongue, a bit of dark humour, a bit of irony, which, which you know, I love irony like that. Because, you know, it doesn't scare me personally. But I know a lot of people aren't going to like hearing that their families and children are going to be drinking that crap. Wow. Anyway, forget that. We're going back to the issue of Xerox. So Xerox, in my prediction, are going on life support. Mm, they're going to basically hemorrhage. It's happened before. Right. And the possibility, my synopsis is, there's another company which is not... It's still making rubbish, but I'll tell you one thing, it's making the, probably the best copy of products on the market now with their this Hub City 754 Heineken Minolta. Well, my prediction is, don't know the exact time frame, is that one day or whenever, the industry is going to basically, Xerox is going to get close to folding, all right, but it won't fold. But what's going to happen with Xerox is that Heineken Minolta are going to basically take on Xerox buy them out because Conical and Minolta looks set to, to rock the stage. They've got a copier that has a preview screen. That's common sense. They should have had four copiers to have and minimises waste. But I wouldn't say that the C754 is really an operator's dream. But I like it. It's got a preview screen. Okay. It's better than anything else I've seen. <sighs> Xerox make too much clean plastic. At least Conical and Minolta use nice rigid materials. Mm. Okay. But still, Conica and Minolta have got a lot of work to do. And unfortunately, they've lost their Japanese shine, I'm afraid. I love the Japanese um, style of management better myself. Um, and that's the problem. But anyway, put, put that aside. Conica and Minolta are, best, are the best, to me, are the best bet we've got. So Conica and Minolta looks set to buy out Xerox. But then Xerox might basically take Conica and Minolta and jump on them. And pull them down the bottom of the ocean, and but no, and then what happens? It's happened. I've read about it. Conic and Minolta will end up being gobbled up by the big X, <laughs> and that's it. Conic and Minolta will become food for Xerox. Because <laughs> I love Xerox, but I love Conic and Minolta. But I'll tell you one thing: if I could run Xerox and Conic and Minolta, you know, if that was my, if I could do that, I would not. If I, I would not say well, it's just call it Xerox, I'd call it maybe KM Xerox, Conic and Minolta, you know, give a little, pay a little homage to the, to the loser, to the vanquished. And the thing is, I'll tell you one thing, I wouldn't want to work out the employees who worked for, well, again, it depends, because we nerds and geeks in this culture cannot own, we cannot get into the copy industry unless someone with a huge paycheck out there can buy one of you OEMs but at the moment we're just fringe dwellers and what can I say sometimes the fringe dwellers oh I can tell a lot they're the greatest barometers but I'll tell you one thing there's one thing to say about long range forecasts of any kind the quality of a forecast is basically when it happens if it doesn't happen then you can call me a doof an idiot, okay, a fool. But if it happens, that's when we say it's it worked. Throwaway copiers, they exist. Yep, there we go. I don't know how long it took for that to evolve, about 15 years. It's hard to tell, isn't it, what the time frame's going to be. But it looks like it's set to happen very soon. Yep, money and greed. Woo! Kills off everything, doesn't it? And no passion and no vision for the future. Damn it. Could we have a self-guided photocopy or something that someone could actually throw questions at? So how do you, do, you know, you, you know, basically treat it like a person who knows about photocopy as an expert system? Okay, and then of course that would make people happy, but unfortunately the people who wanted to build such a device are sitting on welfare <coughs> or they're doing crap jobs like packing significant shells or sitting around <coughs> smoking dope. Ha ha ha.